This episode is brought to you by Odd Mo's Pizza in Canby. Handmade awesome pizza plus craft beer, wine, and cider delivered. Order today at 503-263-8444 or visit them online at oddmoes.com. This episode is also brought to you by Canby Foursquare Church. Since 1978, a place to grow, connect, and serve. Sunday services on campus and online at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Learn more at canbyfoursquare.com. Welcome to Now Hear This Canby, your source for news. The threat of a possible teacher strike was avoided this week. There's a new irresistibly cute creature winning over fans, and its name is Scootaloo. Sports? It's like Lucy in the football. You want to kick a field goal, but they take it away from you. We had to learn how to win. Mm-hmm. Goal can't be in the last second of the game! And interesting conversations. Because I'm one of the strongest girls ever, and I know that for a fact. <laughs> I just really enjoy writing gossip as if I was a bear. <laughs> With an old maid daughter that make the best moonshine in the coast. <laughs> If it would have hit me in the face, I think I would have died. I really do. I guarantee you would have died, man. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Welcome, listeners, to Now Hear This Can Be Podcast. I'm Tyler Clausen, and I'm in the studio again talking to two uh, women I'm extremely excited to talk to uh, because they've been, um, I've been trying to get them into the studio for like, Three weeks now. <laughs> yep. Uh, I've got Vanessa Zimmerman and Brittany Hopping. I get those right. Yep. Correct. Great, because I'm notorious for getting all names wrong, <laughs> and I've I've gotten so much better at it now that people are staring at me when I say <laughs> their name. So much more pressure, and I, I think I've risen to the uh, to the occasion. Vanessa, Brittany, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> we always start off. You know, just kind of with a with a very simple but overarching question that all of our listeners want to know: Who are you, and where do you come from? <laughs> okay, I'll let Vanessa go first. <laughs> it's a big question. I know it's it's big. Uh, I am Vanessa Zimmerman, and I was born and raised in McMinnville, so another small town. I uh, spent most of my adult life in Newburgh, so another small town. Nice. And my husband and I moved here with our kids seven years ago and just fell in love with Camby. Nice. Very cool. What brought you to Camby from Newburgh? We wanted some change for our children, um, a little bit different school system, and we'd heard great things about Camby, and we actually had some friends that had kids in the school system and loved it, and so when we decided to move, this is where we wanted to land. Nice. You just, you threw a pebble across the river, and you're like, that's where we're going to go. We knew we wanted a small community. Yeah. Uh, There's something special to be said about small communities and parents looking out for other parents' kids and the community coming together with business people, um, a safe environment. There's just something special. Sure. Yeah. Um, We've got, you you might think that we're going to skate past um, everything, but we're going to come back to you and we're going to dig into more of McMinnville. Okay. So um, don't think (laughs) you're off the hook yet. No. (laughs) Um, But Brittany, how about you? Um, I'm Brittany Hopping. I am born and raised in this area, kind of. Um, I actually grew up part of my life in Beaver Creek, so not too far out from here, and then um, graduated high school here in Canby and moved back out to Beaver Creek for a little bit, (laughs) and now I just bought a home here in town. Um, Me and my family moved here this year, actually. So um, I worked in Canby my whole life. My kid, my daughter goes to school here in Canby, so yeah. What, what did what you call that, that I was? You're a townie. A townie. townie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what year did you graduate Camby? Uh, 2004. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. I was 07. So, you know, oh. like right behind you. Yeah. You guys are really <laughs> cute. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been a smidge earlier than that. Don't worry, Vanessa. We're going to bring it back to you. I'm going to dive deep uh. into... High school in McMinnville. Oh goodness! Uh, but yeah, so Brittany, you're from from the area Beaver Creek. Yeah. Uh, I used to go to church out in Beaver Creek oh, at yeah. uh, Northwest Contexture. 
It's a little teeny tiny little church right on Leland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know exactly where Leland is. <laughs> Everybody knows where all yep. the buildings are yep. in Beaver Creek. Yeah. It Beaver Creek is still is it a hamlet? Yep. Is yeah, yeah I think, I think there's only like that. four hamlets and I think three of them are in Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beaver Creek, uh well Aurora's a colony. Malino's a hamlet. Malino's a hamlet, yeah. Um, They're all I, right there too. Uh, like, yeah, and it's I think like Stafford. right on two thirteen. Yeah. Nice. So what's that like living in a hamlet? And then coming um, to the I, big I city of Canada. Oh, the big city. <laughs> Actually, I I think they're both kind of similar. I mean, that's kind of why we... I wanted to come back to Canby. My daughter goes to school here. I I was kind of the person that always wanted to get away from Canby when I was in it in yeah. school, you know. And then, then I wanted to come back and bring my yeah, family Yeah, you kind of start to yeah. see yeah. what it offers. Yeah. Uh, and Beaver Creek's like that, too. I love the small town feel. Um, everybody knows everybody, you know, mm-hmm. you watch out for your neighbors and yeah. So. Well, when you can see them past yeah. the trees <laughs> and bridges. And... <laughs> I don't know. More neighbors here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I love it. I, I love that. It's a matter of like, you were close in proximity. You came in, you left and then you came back. Yeah. Um, that's always really fun to hear because I kind of did the same thing. I mean, I, I grew up in Canby my whole life. Spent a few years in Pittsburgh, you know, randomly as as a kid, and then I we came back, grew up, went to high school, and then I went to college in Arizona, and oh, wow. I was like, "This is horrible. Who <laughs> would ever want to live here?" It's <laughs> you got a lot further than I did. <laughs> yeah, it's just too hot. It's just too hot. Um, so then coming back to Canby, I fell in love with it all over again as a young adult, and I think there is something to be said of like you start to really appreciate what what's here Mm -hmm. so it's a different perspective when you're an adult you know yeah yeah compared to when you're a kid you're just riding bikes everywhere and stuff at least i did yeah i I, I can't find anybody else who rode bikes as much as i did it's (laughs) weirding me out i thought everybody we rode bikes all the time we had a a tandem bike so we rode that around town very cool (laughs) (laughs) i think a friend of mine offered me a ride on a tandem bike and i was weirded out at the time i'm sad that i didn't take the opportunity um vanessa we're gonna jump back to you okay you grew up in mcminnville i did like born and raised in mcminnville born raised graduated from high school and graduated Mm. from linfield oh okay great yeah um and uh real quick what is it that you do now i am a mortgage broker okay so did 10-year-old Vanessa in McMinnville grow up thinking, I'm going to become a mortgage broker one day. No. (laughs) (laughs) I've yet to find the child that does. No, no. I grew up wanting to be a teacher. Oh, okay. Um, And so I went to school to be a health PE and weight training teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, You might be too young, but if you've ever seen the movie Dangerous Minds with Michelle Pfeiffer, she's a young blonde teacher that goes to inner city LA to make a difference. And although LA was a little too scary for me, I um, (laughs) moved to Portland Yeah, to inner city Portland um, when I was 21 and started teaching high school up there. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. So, so definitely a completely different. Absolutely. Uh, And I do have to say really, I've never seen dangerous minds. The only reason I know about it is because of the song gangster's paradise. (laughs) by uh coolio yeah. <laughs> like that's that's it that's awesome i know that she's in that movie you should because, watch it it's a great movie yeah especially if i want to become a teacher <laughs> um so so you became a teacher uh at 21 you you succeeded you fulfilled your dream i did um what happened where um well being a female pe and weight training teacher um you're actually one of the first ones to get cut when there are layoffs oh no So I got laid off for three years in a row. So I taught at three high schools over three years. And unfortunately, I um, two parts. I looked very young when I was 21. So I would get carded for my hall pass from Mm. other teachers. And so moving schools that many times, I was having to like recreate myself at every school. Yeah. Um, Build relationships, build rapport, all of that. Uh, The third year I was teaching, I really loved to learn. I'm I 
self-proclaimed nerd. Yeah. So um, the third year I was teaching, I met a financial company that was looking for part-time and they were willing to teach me. And so I was like, well, I always have had to work multiple jobs to pay my bills as a teacher. Yeah. So I was like, I'll do finance because I, I don't know anything about it and be really smart to learn. Yeah. And so I started in the financial industry very part-time, my third year teaching. At the end of that school year, I was laid off again. Oh, wow. But I was making more money part-time in financial <laughs> services than I was teaching full-time. So I just transitioned Yeah, yeah. into finance. Wow, that's crazy. So... Um, like I do this part time, right? And the hope is always like, hey, maybe one day I yeah. can do this full time, right? But you, and most of the time when you talk to people who are doing side gigs and stuff, it's always exciting, like podcasting or art or something like that. You were like, look, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna make my side gig very financially stable. Um, I think that's really interesting. I think it's really cool that you were able to transition that like that and pivot. Um, I'm, I'm assuming since you've been doing it since then, you know, been in the, in the finance world that you, you find it pretty rewarding. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, so I now have been doing it either part-time or full-time since I started part-time for about 25 years. Yeah. Um, and it has been amazing just helping educate people about finance. It can be the most overwhelming yeah. uh, topic in a household and in a marriage. And so sitting down and really spending the time to educate families in, easy to understand terms and walking them through and having the patience, I think, is something that I really, really enjoy. Yeah. And I wish there was more education at the high school and college level, not just when we're buying our first yeah. house or investing, you know, when we get our first 401k or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, it's been a really, really great career. I, I agree. I mean, I honestly, my wife and I have talked so much about what we learned in high school and the things that they pushed on us. And I'm like, man, that a lot of it doesn't add up right. to what we need, you know, learning how to pay taxes and buy a house Correct. and all that. Like, yeah, it might sound boring to a 16 year old, but it needs to be taught. It needs to be learned. Do you, I guess it's a two part question. One, do you ever wish you could go back and go into teaching again and, or, do you feel like you're, what you're doing kind of itches that, scratches that itch of education? So um, my passion overall, yes, I love what I do in finance, but my passion is just to impact families. Like I love mm. to impact people in a positive way in any way that I can, which is how education actually became my passion. I wanted to impact kids. Yeah. Um, so I get to educate through what I do. Um, but I had most recently had an amazing experience with um, Bob Weber at the Canby High School. Yeah. He is teaching a financial algebra class. So he actually brought in three professionals, a financial planner, another um, local financial person who talked about credit. And then he brought me in to talk about mortgages to yeah. his financial algebra class. That's awesome. And you would be amazed at how interested these kids were to hear about mortgages. And I was teaching them about interest rate and that there's closing costs and down payments. And it was it it took me back to the <laughs> my origin, I guess, if you yeah. will, of that, because I hadn't been in a classroom in 25 years. Yeah. Um, and even I have a junior and a freshman at the high school, and the junior came and watched the class really? that I was teaching. And nice. So that was really fun. Um, but I think ultimately for me, as long as I'm having impact and making a difference in people's lives um, in whatever way, that's what brings me the most joy. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. I do have to say, uh, bringing up Mr. Weber was is a bit of a flashback because I had him <laughs> for math. Sure. He was actually one of the teachers that got me. Like, I'm I'm a huge nerd now. Like, in high school, I was in college. I almost failed math. But, like, he instilled in me this sort of love for numbers that I didn't really appreciate then. And then as I got older, I was like, oh, I actually like this. And it really started coming out in Dungeons and Dragons. So. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Weber, for making me good at Dungeons and Dragons. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Brittany, let's 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 jump over. Okay. Um, so you grew up in the hills of Beaver Creek. <laughs> yeah. Um, yodeling, I'm sure, to hear your echo. <laughs> um, you came into Canby. What do you? What is it that you do now? Um, I work at the golf club here in town, uh, Willamette Valley. Okay. I'm their administrative assistant. I've been there for almost ten years. And I'm assuming that you grew up as a little girl wanting. Totally. 
to, to work. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I wanted to <laughs> you do. You <laughs> drove by the country club and you realized like one day. I actually didn't even know it existed for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it that you wanted to do when you were a kid? Where were, where did you come from? What did you want to do? I don't think I know what I want to do still. Yeah? I don't think, yeah. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. She's a very talented at marketing. Yeah. I do enjoy marketing, um, graphic type stuff. Um, I do that for the club. I make our flyers and our newsletters and that type of things. And then um, I'm going to school for um, business and marketing also right now. So That's awesome. Yeah. So being able to be at the club, you're, you're able to like find a passion and and work on it, hoping that one day it you're... It grows. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do you have to, like, when you do graphic design stuff for the country club, is it just, do you have a folder full of, like, JPEGs and, and PNGs of just golf clubs and golf balls? And <laughs> is it just one uh, folder? It's No, I mean, I have a folder full of stuff, but it's all different <laughs> stuff. All of our social, we have social stuff and golf stuff, and I have it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And years, she's probably years and years. not going to tell you, but she actually has a side business. Um, oh, really? That she has recently started. Um, so she does all of my social media, but also all of my print marketing. Yeah. And for several other people at this point as well. So she's probably not going to brag on herself, but well, she's amazing. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a perfect segue into the the next big question of, of the interview is always, you know, what are you doing now? Right. Um, so what is this? this thing that you're doing um it's just a new little side hustle i've been um dabbling in you know like i said i've been doing the flyers and newsletters and some marketing stuff for the club for years now um and you know people around me kind of pushed me and said you should really do this and think about doing this for other people and on the side you know you're doing a great job and what is it exactly that you, you doing is um it's like flyer design logo design um business card design yeah Family portrait designs. Um, it's my business is called Busy Bees Creative Design. Busy Bees. Yep. I'm I like I down. like to stay busy. I'm yeah. always on the go. I don't slow down much. So um, that's where the name came from. Um, and yeah, it's just growing. I'm, I I like custom orders. So if someone has some crazy idea in their head that they want designed, even if it's like a print for their wall or anything, then I just like to bring that to life and hopefully make it just how they want it. Nice. Did you start doing graphic design? Like, did you take a class for it? Or did you just sit down at a computer one day and go, I'm really good at this. I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. It actually all started at the country club. I mean, I, I started part time as the administrative assistant and, um, the position that I was taking over for another gal was still there and she needed help. She did events there Mm -hmm. and she needed help with, um, getting flyers out and advertising and stuff for the club. And she just kind of told me, what to do briefly and run with it. And then I just kind of learned from there and just kind of self-taught myself, I guess, by using the programs that I had access to there. And um, What programs more. are you using? I'm a nerd about all this, right? Because I have the <laughs> studio and I do the same thing. Generally, things, right? we just use, you know, Publisher or, you okay. know, uh, Adobe. Yeah. You know? Nice. So, um, But yeah, I kind of just grew from there. I didn't ever dabble in anything like this before, so... Was there a point where you realized you are good at this, though? Because um, I know for me there was. Like, personally, I was sitting down. My dad was like, I'm going to start a T-shirt business. And I was like, that's a great idea. We should definitely do that in 2008 <laughs> during the recession. <laughs> um, and we sat down and he'd be like, I want it to look like this. And I would draw out some designs. And then, he'd, you know, and I'm a terrible, like, illustrator. But I can put it together, Right. And so we got it all together and I'm just sitting there doing my thing and I'm putting it all together. And he's like, how are you doing this so fast? This is mind boggling. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I just, this is what I do. And I, it was at that point that I was like, oh, I actually love doing this and it's fun to do. Uh, so I went and found a t-shirt company and started working with them. So cool. is, is there a moment where you were working on it and you're like, man, I, I'm actually pretty good at this. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I'm still like, gosh, am I that good at this? You know? like, <laughs> I, I I find myself comparing my work to other people's way too much. I probably shouldn't, but 
people just pushed me for, you know, people I love around me just kept saying, do this, do this, do this, yeah. you know, and finally I was like, you know what, what do I have to lose? Right. You know? Yeah. If you enjoy doing it yeah. and people are asking for it, yeah. then obviously you're good at it enough that people want it. Is yeah. this what's in front of me or is that something that you were? She yes. designed that. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you right now, this looks really good. <laughs> Thank like, you. I'm a fan. <laughs> I couldn't put this much information on one piece of paper and make it interesting. It was a lot. <laughs> At one point, I told Vanessa, no, we cannot put any more information on this. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, be assured, like, yeah, you got you got an eye for it. So, well, thank you. Um, I, I think it's really cool. And I love, I love, love, love seeing people starting businesses in Canby and offering their 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 skills to people who – don't have those skills, right? Like we're a community. That's where we grow. So highly encourage you to see that. Do you have a website? Um, currently I just have like a Facebook page. Facebook page. It's yeah. free. Yeah. It works. And I right? have an Instagram page, but it's very, very quiet right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. When this remodeling project is over, our studio is going to have a full arcade and hot tub. We can play bubble bobble with our hot tub bubbles on full blast. <laughs> Just got to finish downloading these blueprints and we'll be good to go. Oh, yeah, man. It's going to be off the ch Hey, wait a minute. The plans haven't even downloaded yet? How much time is left? <laughs> Not much. It looks like uh, just about 14 hours. 14 hours? Dude, we're not building a skyscraper. It's just a one-room remodel. We have to have those plans today or we won't make our deadline. <laughs> this would not be a problem if somebody hadn't made us hit our data cap for the month by binge-watching the first four seasons of Drop Dead Diva last week. Hey. We have super slow download speeds anyway, and that just slowed us down even more because some providers reduce user speeds for going over their data limit. Well, excuse me for being captivated by Brooke Elliott's perfect balance of heart and humor. <laughs> I'm only human. Man, just let's just switch to Direct Link already. Then we would have unlimited data with upload speeds up to 10 times faster than our current provider. So we can download our plans in a snap, and you can keep binge-watching all your guilty pleasures. Okay, okay, I give. Please, call Direct Link and get us set up. I need that hot tub, and, and I do still have two seasons <laughs> dropped in Diva to watch. For uploads and downloads at the speed of work, visit www.directlink.coop slash internet, or give them a call at 503-266-8111. If somebody wanted to look up your work, what would be the best way for them to do that? Uh, Facebook, probably. I mean, either one. They're both connected to my personal page as well, so it's Busy Bees. And is it creative design? Busy just, B. Just a B. Just the letter B. Like Brittany. Gotcha. Just want to make sure. Yeah. You know. Yep. Like, I didn't know if we were going B E A B E no. E B E. No. Like, there's so many Bs out there. Um, great. That's awesome. Um, I, I'm really excited. I'm going to go check it out after we're done talking. I hope somebody right now pulls over on the side of the road. They get out their phone. They're going on Facebook and uh, checking it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, Vanessa. Yes. What What are you up to? What are you up to nowadays? Uh, my, like I mentioned, my passion is having impact with people. So um, I love doing events here in the community. Um I've always done events through my work, um, so a Father's Day event, a Mother's Day event, things like that, and I partner with local businesses to do those. But this year in particular, I wanted to do some things that really had nothing to do with my work. Mm. Um, I really just wanted to do stuff that came from my heart. Um, and so in January, I um, brought 100 plus who care to Canby. Um, it's 100 plus who care Clackamas County. And I didn't invent it. Um, there is an organization called 100 Women Who Care. I mm. kept mine gender neutral um, so that all people could participate. But the premise behind it is that we get 100 plus people that are willing to come together twice a year and donate $100 twice a year. And when we come together, we listen to three local nonprofits, share their story, what they do, how they impact the community around us, and how extra funds could be useful. And then at the end of hearing all three speak, um, everyone who's in, in attendance takes a vote. We vote on which nonprofit we would like to honor that evening with the funds. And we give them a 
giant check um, showing how much that we are <coughs> donating to their nonprofit. Um, it has been pretty amazing. The first event was in April, and we raised $10,700 in one night. Wow. And then our last event was just in October, and we raised 11500 That's so cool. And so um, that's been my passion. I was able to bring on a committee of local women to help me with it, and so I don't do it alone by any means. And uh, it's just an amazing experience to bring a group of people together, and everyone's donating $100, so it's not a ton of money individually. But together, when we combine that, all together in one evening, we can really have impact. Yeah. And so that that's where I started. And then um, for the last six years, I have done free Santa pictures at Gwen's Coffee House. Um, just free pic, um, professional pictures for the community. This year, I wanted to mix it up a little and do something different. And so- You were <laughs> tired of wearing the big red suit. And yeah, and definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, man, um, I should have got as Mrs. Santa, right? free pics of Mrs. Santa. <laughs> we decided, um, Brittany and I were chatting and we decided we were gonna move Santa pictures to Wait Park in the gazebo. And then we were gonna add a few things. Um, we were gonna a few. <laughs> try to make it a little bit of a fun, a fun experience. And um, from there, Christmas in Canby was created. And this is our first year of okay. Christmas in Canby. Um, it takes place this Saturday. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, so this will be released on mo- on Friday. So that's tomorrow. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. So it is um, s- Saturday, and we're gonna start um, the morning at 9 a.m. with an ugly sweater 5K. Um, all of the profits that we receive from that event will be donated to the Canby Center for their stocking stuffer event that they have. Um, in Real we, quick, yeah. how far is 5K again? It's like three miles, right? Yeah. Three okay. points. Uh, it's three very points obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm actually not a runner. so <laughs> It's so, a run and a walk, too, though. So it is. Family, yeah, family say, friendly. People yeah. running in ugly sweaters. Like, oh, yes. That sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but then at 10 a.m., uh, Wait Park opens up. We um, have two streets closed, and we have about 50 vendors between shopping vendors, activity vendors food vendors we have horse-drawn carriage rides we have miniature reindeer goats coming we have free face painting free henna tattoos free cotton candy really the the goal is that the event itself will be free to the community unless you choose to purchase something from one of the local vendors but the activities will be free even my daughter's softball team is um, hosting a booth helping kids make ornaments Mm. and so just a ton of fun activities for families and then We took it a step further and wanted to incorporate as many businesses in town as possible. And so we have businesses all over Canby that are participating in some way in their respective locations. Oh, really? Yes. So um, all of our boutiques are participating. Canby Rentals is doing a carnival theme event where you actually get to do carnival games with their equipment. Nice. Um, The library is doing like a dance party for kids and a Lego event. and. Cones is doing some fun stuff, Gwen's. And so this is why this little flyer became so big. It's actually (laughs) two-sided. Oh, it's two sides. Wow, (laughs) double the information. Well done, Brittany. Uh, um, So we have um, one side is just what's going on at Waite Park and um, from what time to what time. And the back side is everything that's going on throughout the entire city all day long to where we end with the train station has some fun stuff going on from 5 to 8 and at 7 o'clock there is a Christmas onesie party with live music at the Wild Hair. Wow, this is packed. I mean, I I genuinely can't think of another event that is this widespread and and involved because like, you know, the the big night out we've got it's it's usually like the one or two blocks that's that's blocked off. Oktoberfest, the the um uh, art and literature fair they you know even the general candy days it's all contained within one place you're spreading out you're going i wanted to town. include all businesses that wanted to participate and not all businesses can set up a booth in Wait park and right. so i just proposed if i market it and i advertise it and when i say i i actually mean Brittany because she does all my social media but <laughs> <laughs> if we can market it and advertise it and add it to a full day of christmas at cross canby yeah. would you be interested in participating and everyone was super excited to do so. And honestly, it's um, we thought it was going to be a small event our first year. Um, we started planning this six weeks ago. 
Oh, wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys are like, you guys are blowing my mind right now because I, I know people who plan things for a living and, you know, they do it six months ahead and, and they put stuff together and it's not as widespread as this. This is amazing. Well, and it's actually a testament to Canby. It really is a testament to the business owners in town, the community, because when I walked in and approached a lot of these businesses and said, here's my idea, do you want to play with us? Yeah. Um, pretty much everyone was said yes. Yeah. What do we, how can we help? What can we do? Um, can we sponsor? So we've actually had a lot of businesses who like can be excavating and extreme excavating and Hemmert Construction, and I'm I'm going to leave somebody out, but um, they're all highlighted. <laughs> it's it's um, not an Oscar award. You don't have to get everybody. It's okay. But they obviously aren't going to have a booth or do something. You know, they're a construction company, and so they actually sponsored by donating funds that allow us to have the cotton candy for free and the face yeah. painting for free. And so it really is just goes back to how amazing our community is yeah. and how we really do come together to serve one another. Um, there's no way that Brittany and I could have pulled this off. It probably in any other community, unlike can be, um, yeah. it's been, it's just been a blessing. That's amazing. That That's so cool. And, and I, I know that that feeling like recently I've reached out to companies to start talking about, you know, how they can be involved in the podcast more. And there's always that fear of like, you know, I, my dad, he's, been in sales and and all kinds of stuff his whole life and he's always told me the worst thing they can say is no right but when you're in a small town that's not the worst thing they can say (laughs) when they know who you are when my voice is going out every week that's not the worst thing they can say um and uh and so but i've i've been getting such good reception from people just a warm reception and i'm sure it's been you know triple for you guys because you're asking for help to give something back to Canby. Yes. Um, so I know I know that feeling of, of a trepidation and then all of a sudden, yeah, let's do it. Let's help. Let's, you know. So I, I think that's amazing. Thank where you. did this idea, I mean, you said it grew, right? But where was the kernel? Just, just Santa, I want to do free picks and now all of a sudden were in the park? Yeah, so um, <laughs> definitely wanted to do Santa in the gazebo, but I do know that uh, Vernonia, if you know where Vernonia is, um, Vernonia is a small town here in Oregon, and they do a big Christmas day yeah. in their very small town. And I had watched it on social media for years, and I'm like, we could do that. We could do that <laughs> in Canby. And then I'd be like, I can't do that. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, yeah. And then because I had Brittany and we're like, okay, well, let's try it. And we didn't really think, we definitely did not think it was going to turn into what it is. Um, We were able to get a hold of Alexis who um, runs our Saturday market. Mm -hmm. She's been instrumental in getting a lot of vendors there. So people people can do some Christmas shopping. Nice. Um, But from there, it literally took on a life of its own yeah. because I started <clears throat> talking to businesses and then people would talk to other people and then we'd get a call. Hey, can we be involved? How can we help? What Amazing. can we do? Um, and as of yesterday, we were still having people reach out. Do you have space for vendors? We would like to come. Um, so I have no doubt it'll grow in future years as well. And it will become the, my goal. I love Camby's big weekend, which you referred to, you know, mm-hmm. the Camby street dance can be big night out. I love it. I think it's amazing. So because we have light the night on Friday night, Mm -hmm. I thought, well, if we do this on Saturday, this could be Camby's big weekend winter version. Yeah. And so that really is kind of where my my part is, is that with time, this becomes our winter version of our big weekend to support our local businesses, especially our our local um, retail businesses. Yeah, because every year it's a battle to say, don't just buy stuff on Amazon. Don't. Go Shop find local. something in China. Buy something here in town. Yes. There's so many good shops, so many good artists and, and people. That's where, like, I get excited. I see your your work, and there's so many people in town that are that are truly gifted. And to and so, again, me personally, I write books. I don't have a place where I sell those very often. There's a couple copies at, you know, the book nook. But if there's a, pla- a, a place where I can set up a booth – and sell those that's great and i'm not trying to sell books here but like <laughs> i'm an example of other people yes. like jewelry and and Absolutely. other artists and authors who they might not have a space to do that anywhere else so these events where 
we can be involved in Canby and and support local everything. I think it's just amazing. Yeah, I love it so much. Tyler, did you know that the Australian lyrebird can mimic any sound that it hears? Even chainsaws? No, that's uh, super interesting. Did you know that a baby puffin is called a puffling? Uh, or no. that baby sea otters can't swim, so their moms wrap them up in pieces of kelp until they learn how to paddle? Wait, do you know any trivia that isn't like animal related? Not really, but here's some stuff you may not know about the Wild Hair Saloon, where Camby goes to eat and have fun. Okay. The Wild Hair is one of Camby's longest running locally owned restaurants. Owners Joan and Darren Moden have been in business for 16 years. That's cool. Yeah, heck, you were just a baby back then. I, and, wait, what? and they love to give back. They've been members of the Camby Chamber for that long, and they donate over $20,000 to local sports, FFA programs, and civic organizations each year. Wow, I'm legitimately like caught off. That's cool. Yeah. They also support more than 30 jobs in the community through their award-winning staff, some of them as young as 18. Hey, that's older than you are. Uh, dude, I'm te- I'm 10 months younger than you. With, with the days getting longer and the weather getting warmer, the Canby Wild Hair's expansive outdoor patio is the place to be. Furry friends, welcome. Well, that sounds great. I'm going to go check them out just off of Highway 99E next to the Space Age in Canby at 1656 Beaver Creek Road in Oregon City or on their website at thewildhairsaloon.net. We're very, very excited about it. Um, Yeah, so we're praying for no rain, at least until (laughs) 3 o'clock in the afternoon. (laughs) At least light rain. (laughs) Or um, snow, right? Like you want one or the the other. (laughs) That would be magical. Either absolutely beautiful, bright bright day, which it's not going to be. It's going to be overcast. But, or no, and no rain, or... Give us the snow yes. during our, our Christmas in Canby. Right? Awesome. Yes. That would be awesome. So I'm I'm assuming you're not gonna be dressing as Santa Claus. No, but Brittany and I and <laughs> our <Close>. and our <laughs> uh, friend that is running the five K, um, Amy Baez with Fit for Excellence, uh, will be in definitely Christmas outfits, so you'll okay. be able to spot us. But there is gonna be Santa at the gazebo. Santa will yes. be in the gazebo from I've got ten a to two. Oh, oh yes. I mean, it's gotta happen. They're amazing pictures. They're completely free. Um, Andy Sambucito is a local photographer. He actually is donating his time to do the pictures. Nice. Um, they'll be. I actually, um, if you've never seen my Santa pictures before, I actually own a full-size sleigh that what? Santa awesome. and the kids sit in. What? That's yeah. amazing. I haven't <laughs> seen these pictures before. I need so, to. So but... um, that will be in the gazebo. So your two-year-old will be sitting in the sleigh with Santa. Yeah, that's awesome. I just saw my wife just showed me a video of a child running up to a Santa in the mall. And you can see the parents like running after them, and then like the kid gives the, the Santa a hug, and I'm like, "This is what I want yes. out of life. I just want my kid to go enjoy Christmas." You absolutely. Know? So, I absolutely love what you guys are doing. Now, let's let's go back real quick. You mentioned earlier the the 100 plus. Is that an event that happens soon, or is that just something that you're doing throughout the year? So we are doing it the fourth Thursday of April and the fourth Thursday of October every year, as long as people want to participate. Okay. So so that's something to look forward to on the horizon. Yes. Okay. yes. And uh, we have a Facebook page. Um, we also have a website, um, so you can look up 100 Plus Who Care. Um, on Facebook, it's 100 Plus Who Care Clackamas County. Okay. Um, but you can actually go on there. You can sign up to be a member. You can nominate your favorite local nonprofit. Um, and then as we get closer, um, I send emails to all of our members, just reminding them that it's coming. Um, my committee and I draw the nonprofits um, and we announce who's get, who we're going to hear from that night. And then if you can't make it, um, the only expectation is you drop off your $100 check early because we really do want to make sure that yeah, we're able get to. It all. Yes. And get that number to them. Yes. Yeah, that's um, huge. But, you know, our attendance has been really great at both events so far. Um, people really enjoy coming and listening to the local nonprofits. And then a lot of couples treat it as a date night, or we have a group of women that come and treat it as a ladies night. Mm. Um, but it's when you put um, that many giving kind hearted people in the same room for a couple of hours, it makes for a pretty amazing evening. Yeah, I bet. Just the energy of yes, it would be. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I tend to cry. <laughs> I'm a little bit emotional, but I, I, I just, it, it moves me yeah. how much um, 
we can do when we come together. And because Cambi is so good at coming together and what we can accomplish in our community, it just always blows me away and ends up making me emotional. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What are some of the um, <clears throat> nonprofits that you guys have been able to fundraise for? Yeah. So um, the first um, nonprofit that we donated to was the Hannah Grace family. Okay. Um, and so I definitely checked them out. They're amazing. All the nonprofits we've heard from have been unbelievable. <laughs> it's always hard to choose. Yeah. Um, and then the one that um, we honored uh, most recently was the Dougie Center okay. right here in Canby. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so being able just to, what's great is even the nonprofits that don't win the, the big lump sum of money <clears throat> they are bringing awareness to who they are part of my my goal with this organization is i can't donate my time or my money if i don't even know the nonprofit exists right and there's so many nonprofits, and so if we can bring awareness you know people have been excited and then we always put a little donation basket on all their tables so if somebody feels led to donate to one of the nonprofits that wasn't the big winner for the night they can do so so every nonprofit has walked away with something yeah um, and again awareness but yeah the awareness is huge because <clears throat> being able to get in front of people and say this is what we do absolutely I mean that's that's literally their entire job yeah. <laughs> so and one yeah. of my favorite parts is the the winning nonprofit actually has to come back to the next event and share with us what they use the funds for. Oh, really? So we okay. actually get to know how specifically we impacted them. That's really cool. And that's really fun to hear as well. Nice. Um, so we can obviously hear how excited you are, not <laughs> just about the 100 plus, but also can be uh, Christmas can be. Brittany, you've been sitting there pretty quiet. I'd love to hear what you're excited about most for this Saturday for our listeners tomorrow. Um, I really just think it's going to be the coming together, I think, just to see how many people come and support all these small vendors, you know, that, like you said, they don't necessarily get their name out. They don't have a storefront, you know, it's handcrafted. They put all this time and work into their product. You know, it'll be cool to see so many, hopefully so many people come and see that product and support them and the food vendors and the, you know, they're all local right here. So it'll be It'll be fun to see everybody come together and support that. Yeah. So. Is there going to be a And hot... the goats. I'm pretty, <laughs> the, yeah. I'm pretty excited for the goats. Yeah, The reindeer goats, when you said that, I was like, oh, well, that's a win yeah. right yeah. there. Is there going to be like a hot cocoa stand? Because that's number one where I'm going to go. Yep. There's going to be hot cocoa. There's going to be hot cider. There'll be a little mobile bar cart there from Take a Shot. Um, <laughs> there's going to be cider donuts. and. Oh, cider donuts. Yeah. Oh, you guys are winning right now. That <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah, we have several food trucks. Um, and what, again, I'm sorry, I know you said it, but what time does Wait Park open for, just so I know when I need to get in line? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, okay. the 5K is at 9, and then Wait Park will be open uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. I'll be there. And you don't have to get in line. The way that we do Santa pictures, and I've always done it this way because, well, I have children and I did not like standing in line for Santa. Yeah. <laughs> so I was always at the mall. <clears throat> um, you actually sign in and you're given a number. Yeah. And then you can peruse and check things out and walk around and then we call numbers. Oh, very cool. So that way you don't have to waste a lot of time standing around. You can actually go and check out everything else. This is a system designed by mom. Yes. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Because like... I would have been like, just suffer through it, stay in line. But you're like, no, not again. No, not again. <laughs> <laughs> There's just going to be so much to enjoy, too. That's, you don't have time to stand in line. We're going to have Christmas carolers there. The Candelinas are going to be there singing. Yes. Really? Um, yes. Yeah. And then That's all the so kids' cool. activities. There's going to just be different crafts and ornament making and spirits for the adults to taste. And we'll have tables and chairs so people could enjoy their meals and... It's just going to be a lot to enjoy. Yeah, sounds beautiful. I genuinely like. I'm I'm sure that Hallmark is going to show up at some point <laughs> so that they can film. I mean, a that'd movie, be cool. <laughs> you know. And Brittany designed. Well, she designed all of our marketing and our social media, um, but she also designed our Christmas in Canby logo oh, really? that we have. And we decided to make commemorative um, 2023 Christmas in Canby ornaments. And so the first hundred people that come and check in with Brittany and I at the check-in booth Saturday morning will actually get a free commemorative ornament nice to commemorate our first christmas in canby that's so cool that's very cool they're and really it's all cool. her design they're really cool will they be so if if we're not one of the first hundred will they be available for purchase at a later time yep they're actually going to be um available for purchase at kendall made 
okay. out um, Woodburn off of Barlow Road. She makes them. They're like little wood ornaments. So you could take the design to her and say, hey, you know, I didn't get one. And she'll make them up for you. That's so cool. We yeah. want to do someone local for that reason so that people could still get one. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So um, outside of tomorrow, again, for our listeners and in April, what else are you guys excited about when it comes to Canby, either in the near future or just overall just Canby vibing? I think for me, um, (laughs) because we've only lived here for seven years, um, it can be really is probably one of the most welcoming small communities, and I've lived in a few. Yeah. Um, and so we, my husband and I, in a very short time of moving here, we're like, this is home. Yeah. This is home. People make us feel like we're home. You know, we can't go to Backstop without knowing a ton of people or Ebner's or Jarbo's or the hair or, you know, just being able to be out in the community and just feel like we have um, friends everywhere we go Um, and people that look out for our children. Yeah, I think that is um, so special, especially in today's world, um, that we have a community of people that look out for each other's kids and support each other's kids and um it just I, is a unique I, dude place. i know that so much because i because i'm a new dad like you know the whole time you're pregnant my wife's pregnant it's like <laughs> i hope this kid comes out okay and then once he's once he's out i'll be fine and then once he's out it's like i hope i can take care of him for a right. year once the first year's over it'll be fine the first year's over and it's like now i'm afraid of literally everything in the entire world <laughs> And so I totally get mm-hmm. that. And I and I think you're right. Like, Camby is a community that cares about the future of its people. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's great. And I think these events that we see are illustrations of that. Because it's not it's not just another opportunity to, okay, go go sell some stuff, go buy stuff. It's an opportunity to show community show caring between people in our you know in our town and when kids are you know exposed to that then they grow up with that same sense of of community definitely so i think it's really cool i'm i'm really excited i was already like kind of excited (laughs) because it's a thing happening at christmas but the more you talk about it the more i'm like (laughs) Is it Saturday yet? Uh (laughs) No, we need like two more days. Yeah, please. (laughs) Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Brittany, how about you? Um, I'm with Vanessa. I mean, it's nice to have people looking out for your kids. Um, I'm a, I have a teenager, so you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. She could, I, giving them their freedom, you know, then Mm. she can't hardly get too far because she runs into somebody, you know, oh, hey, you know, that recognizes her, but she might not know them, you know, so it is, it's having, having people look out for your kids, you know, um, having people look out for you. I mean, your neighbors, you know, we just moved here. We just bought our house here, like I said, this year and um, all of our neighbors were so welcoming. One neighbor brought us cookies. A lady brought me Mm. jam, you know, and you know, I, we lost our cat. They watch out for our animals. You know, they're just all so nice. And that's just how Camby is in general. Yeah. You know. So. It's great. Um, cool. Well, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? Um, you know, I, now I'm just, I just want to go get some hot cocoa <laughs> and cider donuts. So I'm Jones and, but no, I would just say if you need any marketing, Brittany is really, really amazing. I reached out to her and I'm like, I don't know if you want to do something on the side, but I really need help. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she has definitely, I mean, she did, she took care of all the, um, design for our hundred plus who care and it's beautiful yeah um and then obviously christmas and can be and then all my business stuff so where can people sorry to interrupt no, but you're you fine. you mentioned this this uh activity list um i will call it the gauntlet that you put Brittany <laughs> through um where can people find this so it is at a lot of our local businesses they will also be handed out the morning um at, on saturday okay but then it's also on our facebook page um, Brittany posted it today um, both the front and the back side so you can get on there and check out what you want to do plan your day of where you want to go yeah um so it's all there for comment you comment and say Brittany, well done yes do more of this yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> very cool one thing i don't think we talked about was the stocking stepper drive oh thank you that's the super important part. So we're doing a stocking supper drive to help um, the Canby Center. Okay. Um, 
So local businesses here, we have six local I think businesses, six local businesses or so um, that we took buckets to that we they'll be collecting um, items to be stuffed in adult and children's stockings for families that can't necessarily provide that this year. Um, and so starting last last Friday, Black Friday, and then through first Thursday, they'll all be collecting stocking stuffer items, um, five to ten dollar items, and then we will all take it to the Canby Center for their their stocking stuffer. Drive, yeah, so we'll pick program. them up Thursday night. Um, we'll deliver them on Friday to the Canby Center. Um, Swan Island Dahlia's has a bucket. Jarbo's has a bucket. Ebner's has a bucket. Um, Northwest Furniture. Northwest Furniture Outlet. Uh, Canby Builders Supply. Swan Island. Yeah, I said that. So there's a lot of locations. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we're going to actually have buckets Saturday. So right. that as you're shopping vendors, if you find something, you can throw it in the bucket. Um, but it will be, and I actually got a call today from Mike Ebner saying, my bucket's full. What do I do? Nice. So I'm going to go swap his bucket out. Um, but I'd have to turn it into a competition <laughs> again. I know. <laughs> um, normally I do a back-to-school drive competition with local restaurants, and I have them compete e- against each other. Yeah. Um, it's Christmas time, so I wasn't bringing in the competition, but I think but Mike's Edmonton, winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. filled it full of meat. Oh, yeah, like, right. We win. <laughs> Pepperoni sticks. <laughs> so we do. Um, the, the Canby Center does so many amazing things for our community as well, and so trying to support them when they're trying to support our community. Yeah. Um, and so we, that'll be a fun part of this adventure. It's obviously longer than Christmas in Canby, but we did that on purpose to try to raise as much as we could. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming down. Um, I'm going to make sure we get all the links and everything that we can in the description for the episode so that people can go and check out um, your Facebook page, Brittany, the Facebook page for um, all the stuff that's going on at Cam- uh, Christmas at Canby, um, the 100 plus, uh, which I think is a very cool initiative. Um, and if you want to be involved in any way, can people still be involved with like it's Friday. People are like, I, I'm this, I gotta be a help part of this. Can someone call you or text you or email you? Absolutely. Um, if you want to volunteer, we're always looking for extra help, definitely with setup and tear down. Um, it, but don't feel like you need to, you can just come and experience it for the first time as well. Um, but, and then for the hundred plus, absolutely check out the website. You can be involved in that at any time too. Awesome. All right, listeners, can be, uh, make sure you bundle up, put on your ugliest sweater, get ready to run, and um, we'll see you in the um, hot cocoa line on Saturday. <laughs> so have a good week. Hey, I'm AJ. I'm your uh, local Oddmos franchise owner. I'm Mike, co-founder of Oddmos. And we're the hosts of The Odd Pod, a podcast that about life in the pizza industry. We're going to have on some franchisees. We're going to have some different vendors on. We're going to get a snapshot of what goes on behind the scenes in the, the pizza world. Don't forget to tell them about the sports. They're sports. And the crazy wacky pizza that we have every Wednesday that we create. And we also have a special guest every week as well. And I'm Gage, Odd Pod Senior Sports Analyst. Gage, who gave you that title? Me. Oh, boy. Find us on Spotify and Apple Music and the Podbean. Now Hear This Can Be is produced by me, Tyler Clausen. Our content director and star reporter is Tyler Frankie. And of course, our show is edited by Cameron Clausen. We also feature the vocal talents of Joy Struby and James Walden. So a round of applause to them. The song that you're hearing right now is Can Be by singer-songwriter Olivia Harms, used with her permission. To find more work from her, you can visit her website, olivia13.com. Now Hear This Can Be is dedicated to preserving independent local journalism and redefining local news with our fun, fresh, and energetic brand of storytelling. Our sincere thanks to our local sponsors who make this show possible. Please show your appreciation by supporting the small businesses who support us. The production of Now Hear This Studios, Canby's locally owned, full-service audio, video, and media production company. Our mission is to produce the best content in the universe. And we'd love to help you do it. Find us online at nhtstudios.com. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. I just moved it. I didn't even ask for it, though. (laughs)